Hi everybody, welcome back to Talk Gnosis. This is part three of our four-part conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Kupperman. If you recall last time, we talked about whether or not the Rosicrucian Manifestos were actually a hoax, and we talked about some of the organizations that sprung up around the time of the Manifestos and what people of that day did with that information. In this episode, we're going to talk about Rosicrucian orders that came after the uh, original publishing of the manifestos. Specifically, we're going to talk about Masonic Rosicrucianism in its various forms. We're going to talk about the Golden Dawn, Martinism, Ordo Templi Orientis, and of course, Amwork, or the ancient mystical order Rose Crucis. So stick around and check out this episode, part three of our conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Kupperman on the Rosicrucians. How is uh, Rosicrucianism linked to, to later orders? You know, we talked a lot about the 1600s, but uh, doesn't it kind of have an influence on the, uh, the different orders that are popping up around Europe that are still around today? I'm thinking like Freemasonry and Martianism uh, in the uh, in the 1700s, and then later on in the 1800s, uh, you know, like uh, the Golden Dawn, and then early 20th century OTO. Uh, yeah. Um... It, the the connections seem to be largely external. I, again, you'll find people saying, "Well, you know, the Martinists. We were we were always Rosicrucians, and then we just sort of came out." Uh, um, but what we seem to find um, very frequently is that, for instance, you look at um, Freemasonry and Scottish Rite Freemasonry, where there are uh, the Rosicrucian degrees, uh, where somebody thought this was a really neat idea. And there are some really cool Rosicrucian stuff going on, so let's let's use some of that symbolism, uh, and we'll make some degrees. And well, because you know this was at the time where uh, there were you know billions and billions of degrees uh, mm -hmm. in, in in Freemasonry. Um, you know there there are there are even Rosicrucian degrees uh, in York Rite as well. But I think the Scottish Rite ones are a little bit more well known. Um, but when you look at the the Scottish Rite Rosicrucian degrees. Uh, you know, you don't have, they're not saying, and now you should go practice alchemy. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're allegorical, they're symbolic, they're, they're moral. Uh, maybe some people will contemplate on them, um, but I don't know that anybody considered themselves to be part of the Rosicrucian order uh, right. because they're the 18th, in, you know, the 18th degree of Scottish Rite. Um, uh, sorry, do you think... Sorry to jump in there just to kind of stay on this, although I'm sure it'll apply to some of these other orders. Do these so so basically there, there's an order in these in these higher Masonic bodies, other Masonic uh, bodies. Uh, sorry, degrees that are called like Rosicrucian Captain Number uh, Degree Seventeen. Um, I don't. Something. I'm just something <laughs> like that. Knights so, of the something or other. Knights of the something, whatever, Rosicrucian, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they receive, they go for a ritual, they receive an allegory, they kind of get a teaching on this degree. Are, were those teachings kind of more directly linked to Rosicrucianism? Is it, were, were, would, that, would the content of that degree be similar to what we have going on in the, uh, the manifestos? Uh, th thematically, not necessarily specifically, we're going to take this part of the manifesto, like the, golden, like, um, the RNAC does, you know, the, the Golden Dawn Dinner Order where they take a chunk of, of the fama and they put it right into the ritual. Uh, instead, there seems to be more uh, thematic. The, 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 for instance, the Scottish Rite has a re is really heavily influenced on like Solomonic, uh, like King Solomon, not uh, mm -hmm. Solomonic um, uh, occultism, uh, symbolism, and it sort of incorporates uh, Rosicrucian ideology into its overall uh, mystery play that, that it does. But you don't have somebody being Christian Rosencruz, so far as I know. Um, it's been a while since I, I've read uh, Morals and Dogma. Um, acting as Christian Rosencruz, like you have somebody sort of kind of taking the place as Hiram Abif uh, in, in other rituals. So it's a little more um, on the side, as it, as it were. It's not quite as explicit uh, as it is in the Golden Dawn, for instance. Here in, uh, in the United States, uh, well, starting in England and then moving to the United States, there's a, there's a specific uh, Masonic group called the Societas Rosicruciana in Anglia, and then when it moves over to the, in, in England is, how, is what that is in Latin, and then they moves over to the United States, and uh, Societas Rosicruciana in Civibus Fraternitas or something like that, uh, the United States, essentially. Nope. Yeah. Um, 
and these uh, purport to be specifically Rosicrucian Masonic orders. I actually don't know a whole lot about them because they're invitation only and I have not been invited. Um, but uh, yes. it, it's my understanding that the at least the SRICF in the United States is at this point largely a, a supper club. It's not, they don't really do a lot of esoteric-y stuff. Um, they're, you know, largely just a, uh, an old boys club for, you know, old white dudes. It, that's my understanding anyway. I could be completely wrong. But, uh, but they do, as far as I know, include some Rosicrucian symbolism in their, uh, in their degree work. Uh, yeah. And as far as I know, the, the English version, um, it's a really great place to get drunk. Well, um, well <laughs> where again, is it? I mean, that, the TV studio is a really great place to get drunk. Really so, uh, yeah, I, you know, they, they have their 10 degree system. That, that seems to be which would, whether that's the origin of the 10 degree system or whether they borrowed it from, from somebody else, like the, the Golden Rosy Kreutz, the, the German Germanic order. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they are these they're not even officially appellate bodies as far as I know. They well, the SRICF, yeah, the SRICF is, is attached to the York right in the United States. I, okay. I, I actually don't know about the English version because I don't yeah. think that the, the, word, the phrase York right means the same thing over there as it does over yeah. here. As far as I know, and I, and I could be wrong, the, the SIRRA is its own thing, mm. but you have to be a, a master mason, you have to be a Trinitarian Christian mm -hmm. uh, to, to, be, to become a member. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, yeah, they, they use, uh, because of course Westcott was one of the, like, the founding yes, members. Yes, right. Uh, so, so shockingly they use uh, golden Rosicrucian symbolism because he was into that. Yeah. Um, and whether or not they ever actually practice magic, they may have at some point because of Westcott and that would, would have been sort of his emphasis. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I don't know that they do today. Uh, their, their rituals and uh, I believe the first four degrees of the SRA rituals, uh, there was a commentary written uh, by Alex Summer, Sumner uh, um, for the JWMT, for the Journal of the Western Mystery Tradition. So that should still be online uh, somewhere. Uh, I don't know we'll put it in the show notes. Often. Oh, well, um, I actually um, interrupted you, Dr. Uh, Kupperman, uh, the, after you were talking about Freemasonry, but you were about to mention something about Martinism uh, and, uh, and Rosicrucianism. Uh, yeah, you know, Martinism, and I'm not a Martinist, um, so, so I can't speak directly um, from my own knowledge, but I, I've, I've done a little bit of writing on, on the subject. Um, you know, Martinism is sort of fascinating because it has... A bunch of different subgroups within it. Um, and besides there being uh, a couple thousand Martinist orders, um, each of which has their own, you know, take on, on Martinism. There, there are, is a Rosicrucian element to one branch of various forms of, of, of Martinism. There's you know, a, the the order Rose Cross or uh, Rose Croix. Um, and again, you know, so we're, we're moving a little bit backwards because we've been talking a little bit about the Golden Dawn. And the SRIA, which are which are later, um, sort of moving backwards uh, into the 1700s. Um, but again, there doesn't seem to be any reason to believe that they are a direct descendant from the Rosicrucians, capital T, capital R, mm -hmm. right from from the Fama. That instead they, like everybody else uh, that we've talked about, was influenced by Rosicrucian symbolism, brought it into. Uh, their their ritual system in, into their initiatory system in, into their their theurgy, um, and sort of have included that that element of it as uh, an inspiring source rather than um, where we came, where they came from. Right. Um, okay. Very cool. Well, we'll stay in the 1700s just for a moment before we we jump ahead a century into into Golden Dawn, but. Um, uh, so also, uh, if I'm to understand, after the, uh, so we kind of talked about the other orders, but in the 16 and 17 hundreds, there are a bunch of orders popping up, just straight up calling themselves Rosicrucian, right? And yeah. some of them are, are saying they are the Rosicrucians from the, um, from the manifestos, or others are saying we may not be the ones who wrote the manifestos, but we like them so much, we're going to call ourselves the Rosicrucians. Um, mm -hmm. Like, so we do have a number of groups just popping up saying, yeah, we're, we're Rosicrucians and you know, we love that that that, that those three uh, manifestos, and that's what we kind of want to do. So, mm -hmm. do we have that as well mixed in, like yes. uh, around this time period? A absolutely. Um, the, the Golden Rosenkreutz um, is probably the most well known of these, and they're largely an alchemical order, as as far as I know, um, so far as you know. Um, so, you and I think, and I, I don't, 
I don't know for certain if they consider themselves as a descendant of the original order or, or, or not. Uh, but you've got a bunch of people popping up uh, claiming to be Rosicrucians uh, in the late 1600s, early 1700s, and then really moving, um, you know, in, in, into the, the, the into the 19. 19- 1900s and, and even today you've got new Rosicrucian groups popping up all over the place hmm. yeah um, so I guess that is actually a good okay there's the 1700s covers <laughs> check might as well check might as well uh, move on up so you've already mentioned the, the Golden Dawn a few times uh, just for listeners who don't know maybe give us a one sentence who they were uh, but you said that they really kind of incorporate some 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 Rosicrucian symbolism uh, uh, kind of directly into into their system. So we could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, so the Golden Dawn is probably the most famous of the, the modern Rosicrucian orders. Well, strictly speaking, it's not the Golden Dawn. So the Golden Dawn um, in the late 18, 1886, 1888, something like that, uh, you got uh, William Wynne Westcott, uh, S.L. McGregor Mathers, and Woodford, who like dies two weeks later in, in, in effect. Um, they form a Rosicrucian or a magical uh, organization uh, called the Order of the Golden Dawn, where they incorporate uh, hermetic Kabbalah and al- or alchemical symbolism and astronomy and tarot and all this sort of stuff. Uh, they sort of teach the magical philosophy and they have a bunch of initiation ceremonies, and they're really not Rosicrucian. Um, <laughs> but it, it, so it's the, the second order, the, the, the Rosier, Rubiad, or Crucus, uh, or however that might be pronounced. Mm-hmm. Um, that gets formed a few years later after they get a bunch of people who've gone all the way through all of their outer material, and they go, okay, now what? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they claim that they are in contact, or Westcott claims that he gets in contact with the Rosicrucian order in, in Germany. As Germany at this time is seen as the spiritual motherland. So if you're going to connect yourself to, to anywhere, uh, mystically and magically, you're, which again, technical terms, um, mm-hmm. you're going you're gonna to go to Germany for that. And they develop the, this inner order, the, the R and AC. And this is their Rosicrucian order. Um, uh, very explicitly, the, the Adeptus Minor degree, the first degree of the, the first full degree of the, the R and AC. Uh, you know, there is an avault, a vault of the Adepti based on the description in, in the Fama Fraternitatis. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a figure who, who plays um, Christian Rosicruz after he has been buried and, and been being rediscovered uh, by the candidate. Uh, so they, they bring elements of the Fama directly into not only our parts of it read, but parts of it are en- enacted or reenacted right in the initiation ritual. After that, it becomes uh, questionable as to how Rosicrucian the RNAC actually remains. Uh, and depending on who you ask, they're either completely and totally Rosicrucian all the time, or they don't do anything Rosicrucian ever again, except that you wear one of these things, mm-hmm. and clearly you must be a Rosicrucian. Um, <laughs> so, but but they 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 understand themselves to be Rosicrucian at, at least in in spirit. I mean, they name themselves the the the, the Rosier Rubier, the, the the red the how would we whatever that is the Rosier Rubier, the red rose and cross of gold, right? Um, so so they have that that sort of connection um, in, in the inner order at, at the very least. So there's your way more than one sentence description. <laughs> of, on, and the Golden Dawn does exist today in, in various forms and after several sk- interesting schisms and, um, you know. Yes. So, uh, so for people who are interested in Rosicrucian symbolism at the very least, that, that's, uh, that's one direction that they could go. Um, if you're interested in magical practice. It, yeah, it's exactly, yeah. It's specifically magical practice uh, uh, order. Um, where does the OTO fit into all of this? Um, because they always fit into it somewhere. They, they, they're, yes, they, they do. Um, and that comes through Alistair Crowley, mm-hmm. um, who was a member of the Golden Dawn and the RAC, and either was or was not expelled, depending on whether or not you believe the people who expelled him had the authority to expel him <laughs> uh, or, or not. Um, and he goes on to become uh, an Adeptus Minor uh, of the RAC under Mathers in France. Um, and then that whole thing blows up. Um, not only the Golden Dawn and the RAC sort of blow up into fabulous little bits and pieces all over the place, 
Um, but Mathers and, and Crowley's uh, relationship uh, self-destruct mm -hmm. uh, for, for various and fascinating reasons. Um, and Crowley, not only does he start his own uh, magical order, the AA, uh, which which he does bring, he lo Crowley loved Rosicrucian symbolism. So even though Rosicrucianism should technically be part of the old Aeon of Osiris, um, this one would think, and I'm not overly um, uh, versed in, in the philosophy uh, behind that. Mm -hmm. um, he brings it right in, uh, and you see it in, in all of his books on the AA, like magic and theory and practice. Um, but then he also ends up going into the OTO um, because he ends up like meeting, I think it's Theodore Roos at the, at the time, mm -hmm. but I, I don't fool me to that, um, who, who accuses him, who accuses Crowley of publishing the, the, the highest secrets of the OTO, <laughs> at which point Crowley points out, but I'm not a member of the OTO, so how is that possible? Um, and so he kind of makes him a, a, an OTO member on site. Um, and Crowley either is... Give, becomes the head or takes over again, depending on whose story uh, you, you want to believe. Um, and again, he brings in because he loves this the Rosicrucian symbolism so much. Um, he brings that into uh, the OTO just like he does into the AA. Though I think it's stronger in the AA than it is in the OTO, uh, which is the Ordo Templi Orientis for those following yep. along at home. Right. Um, and how Rosicrucian are they? You know, if, if we go back to the Fama, are we going to find? Uh, really explicit Rosicrucian elements as they're shown in the Fama in either of these depends on how you squint. <laughs> you know, you know there, there certainly there's al alchemical symbolism. Uh, there's uh, inner or spiritual alchemy going on there. Uh, we may very well argue that there's uh, sexual alchemy in the OTO. So kind of. Um, do they proclaim nothing but to cure the sick and that for free? Not particularly, but neither does the Golden Dawn. Right. Uh, not, neither do most of the modern Rosicrucian orders. Um, so I, I don't know how much we, we need to to be following those rules versus the overall philosophy that's in, in the FAMO or, or the Confessio when we're looking at these. Yeah. So we're kind of, uh, uh, now that we're going in order, um, we've arrived in the early 20th century, and probably the, the most significant order uh, we should talk about is, is AMORC, A-M-O-R-C. Uh, because they've kind of become a powerhouse in the 20th century, and anybody who read comic books as a kid or, uh, um, I don't know, old Rolling Stones or uh, strange magazines would find their ads at the very back. Mm -hmm. um, I even so, looked at uh, that today. Oh, there we go. It's, um, uh, was, when did you, when, when you were a kid or, like, later in life? Uh, when I was a teenager. I, maybe, maybe close to being 18 or 19. Uh, you know, and it was, I don't even remember what, what I was reading at the time. It, it, um, I'm going to guess it was in the back of Gnosis magazine. Mm -hmm. um, that seems likely. And they sent me, and I've talked to other people. Um, you, know, they say, you, know, you have been selected, <laughs> especially that if you join us now, you will receive this special gold rose cross pendant, which we're not giving to everyone, just special people. And almost everyone that I've talked to has gotten that same thing. Yeah. Um, oh, they are a marketing machine. That's for sure. They are. They are. Um, I did not join that, that um, after that uh, very flattering offer. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they are everywhere. Um, you know, they've got the Rosicrucian Park and the Rosicrucian Museum out in California. Mm -hmm. um, they have really big, powerful lawyers suing anybody who calls themselves the Rosicrucian Society. Um, and it's the sort of the question again, you know, how Rosicrucian are, are they? Uh, and the, the general consensus outside of Amor itself, which of course were Rosicrucians, um, they seem to have a, a, some sort of lineage that goes back um, at least a century, if, if not more. Um, but people outside Amorc seem to say, eh, you're not really all that Rosicrucian. You, you don't see a lot of uh, the stuff that the Confessio and the Fama say that you should be doing. But again, it, 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 a lot of that ends up being this matter of interpretation. You know, what is alchemy? Amorc seems to do some kind of spiritual alchemy with, it, with their, their meditations and whatnot. Um, they use Rosicrucian symbolism, but who doesn't? Um, <laughs> you know, when we, we as as we move farther and farther away from the source material, um, 
the way Rosicrucianism gets interpreted becomes, and perhaps rightfully so, more modern. It stays with the time that it's being interpreted. In. So yeah, that kind of know, fits, though, with the you know where where the clothes of your of your surroundings, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then it always becomes that that question, and you see that with modern Golden Dawn groups, with with modern OTO groups. Well, they've moved this far away from the original material. Are they still this? Well, that does it for part three of our conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Kupperman. Uh, in our next episode, we're going to be continuing where we last left off, our last thought in that episode. We're going to talk about how Rosicrucian are these Rosicrucian groups actually, uh, how closely related are they to those original manifestos. And then we're going to go into a uh, kind of explanation of the Rosen Cross as a symbol. Then we're going to talk about Gnosticism and Rosicrucianism and whether they're related or not and we're going to close with a little secret about Jeffrey's Rosicrucian Society. So stick around for that coming up next week on Talk Nexus.